Hello everyone. So in this video today we're going to be understanding about memory of words and deficits of the same being anomic aphasia. So with regards to anomic aphasia, we're going to be first trying to look at the clinical manifestation which is nothing but the features of the client with such an issue. So the client will be able to speak fluently and his grammatical structure seems to be perfectly fine. So they have excellent comprehension abilities but however they find it really hard in order to provide appropriate words. So this difficulty is kind of you know compensated using you know a feature called circumlocutions. So basically this is nothing but a strategy wherein the patient with anomia uses alternative ways to say what they want to communicate when they are unable to get the right word. So for example, they might use definition or explanations of the word that they are trying to talk about. So say it is a hairdryer. The word for this device that you see on the screen is hairdryer. So they may not be able to get the appropriate word. So they might go on defining it like say that thing that can make wet hair dry. So that is basically a kind of circumlocutions that individuals with anomia actually you know incorporate. So, anomia, we can see it as a partial amnesia for words, which can happen because of lesions. Lesions can happen in the anterior regions of the brain or in the posterior regions of the brain. So, at the anterior regions are right here and the posterior regions are right here. So, when the, re when the lesion is in the posterior parts of the brain, the client is left with a fluent anomia as in the uh, the client is able to speak fluently all right but on the other hand if there is a lesion in the anterior regions of the brain the client will not be able to speak fluently either so next we're gonna look at you know brain regions and you know involvement in words so what kind of words activate what kind of brain regions is what we're gonna look at so beginning with an understanding of common nouns so we're gonna do a little bit of English right now common nouns are basically a person place or thing identified as a word so no capitalization is actually required on the other hand a proper noun is a person place or think himself or herself or the thing itself so it could be a name so capitalization definitely is required so examples for a common noun could be girl man college whereas examples for a proper noun could be Ruth Winson etc so with regards to common nouns they are categories and proper nouns they are specifics so when that's a damage in the inferior temporal cortex we can have a anomia for common nouns on the other hand say there is a damage to the temporal lobe leaving out the inferior co temporal cortex then that can be uh, you know deficits or anomia for proper noun on the other hand say there is a damage in both the regions okay so holistically then there will be anomia for both common as well as proper nouns so this also is confirmed by varied studies and this kind of proofs of anomia for common nouns and proper nouns being centered on the temporal lobes so now we're gonna look at anomia for verbs so which can better be explained as a verbia so a verbia is caused by damage to the frontal cortex so the frontal cortex is highlighted in this image that you see here with colors so the frontal cortex is involved in executive functions like planning and organization which involves a lot of actions so individuals with the damage to the frontal region regions cannot really recall words of action so studies also confirm that this region you know especially the Broca's area and the surrounding area or areas you know closer to the Broca's area is of primary importance for production of verbs so with regards to this we're going to look at a few studies 
okay so we are looking at study one in study one what happened was the clients were asked to i'm sorry the subjects were asked to uh, you know hear or read nouns okay so for example hear or read nouns noun words so for example it is knife okay and then they were asked to describe appropriate verbs to it so for example say knife what would be an appropriate verb for knife cut so for example if it is a gun appropriate verb for gun would be shoot so say it's a ball appropriate verb for the ball would be throw so like this there were different nouns given and they were asked to give a right verb for it so then while doing this process they you know they actually went through a pet scan so the pet scans kind of gave the following impressions one thing was the temporal lobes were activated during comprehension of nouns whereas the frontal lobe regions that is specifically these regions were activated when they were trying to associate actions or verbs to the nouns so that's basically again proving frontal lobe regions involvement in nouns i'm sorry in verbs and temporal lobe regions in nouns the next thing that we're going to look at is another study so the in this study also the subjects were shown pictures of animals and tools and there were three conditions in this research so in condition one under pet scan they were asked to name all of them that is name all the animals as well as tools and they were going through a pet scan so under the pet scan the following regions were actually activated and that is nothing but the inferior you know temporal regions as well as the broca's area was activated when they were trying to recall both animals and tools on the other hand in condition two they were asked to name only animals selectively so activation during this was only in the visual association area in the medial occipital lobe so basically that was condition two and its activation and in condition three they were asked to name only tools selectively and the activation centered around the middle temporal gyrus of the you know of the temporal region as well as the premotor cortex that you can see out here so basically when you are looking at you know these three conditions and brain activation we can actually conclude that different words activate different regions of the brain so as our topic for discussion was naming you know memory of words so words kind of activate all across the brain different regions and different kinds of verbs i'm sorry verbs or nouns or any other kind of word okay in specific activate certain specific regions for example action words are you know activated in action oriented regions of the brain or for example the premotor cortex in the case of tools the premotor cortex is highly activated also when you use such tools so memory of the words can kind of come up when you also again try to you know when you're trying to recall other tools also the premotor cortex kind of shows up so which means our brain is programmed in such a way that different brain regions have activations for different kinds of words so we cannot isolate words to be in one specific region of the brain it's spread all across the brain so i hope you all have understood memory of words and anomic aphasia with this we come to a conclusion of our discussion i hope you all understood it if you have any doubts kindly notify thank you